imagine that here's a control valve and a control valve's operation is very similar to a resistor. A control valve will resist the flow, a resistor will resist the current and the voltage difference is very similar to pressure difference. Let's take an example. So imagine here's your resistor and you put it to a battery but you connect 24 volts on both the sides. Can you tell me what will be the current here? The answer is zero amperes. Why? Because even if you've given a good voltage, but it is same on both the sides. However, what if I reduce the voltage on its other side? What will happen to the current now? It will increase. And what if I keep reducing the voltage at the other side? The current will keep on increasing. And what if I keep it to zero volt DC? Now, if you see the current, that will be maximum amperes which will be flowing through the circuit. Don't you think this would is the same thing that would happen to a valve? So for example, here's a valve and I connect it and I put a differential pressure, but I keep the pressure initially same, that is 24 bar. Can you tell me what will be the flow now at this point of time? The answer is it will be zero. There would be no flow, even though the pressure is high because it is same at both the sides. Now I reduce the pressure. What is going to happen to the flow now? The flow will slightly increase. If I keep reducing this pressure, the flow will keep on increasing, right? And what if I keep it zero bar? The flow always should be maximum flow, right? The answer to it is no, this will not always be the case. Why? Let us look at that example. Here, imagine that this is my valve and I've connected it to a pipe and now I'll plot a graph between the pressure difference and the flow. So if you see here, when I keep the upstream pressure is 24 bar constant and the valve opening at around 50% and in the downstream I keep it 20 bar, 19 bar, 18 bar, I keep reducing it, I'll get a very linear curve. This makes sense. But then after a point of time, you would see that the curve is getting saturated. And even though I'm increasing the pressure, there is no change in the flow. Ideally, this should have been the characteristics, right? Which we call as maybe the ideal flow characteristics. But the ideal flow characteristics don't work as we saw in the electrical circuit as well. This point is the actual curve where the flow will not increase even though we increase the differential pressure across it. This phenomenon, it happens at a point where we call as the del P choked or the choked flow value beyond which even if you increase the pressure drop, there is going to be no increase in the flow. And this phenomenon is called as choke flow. But you would have this question that why does choke flow happen in the first place? And does it only happen to liquids or it happens to gases as well? We'll explore this amazing concept together. Imagine that you have your valve and we'll put it in a line and actually plot the curve between the pressure and velocity. These two amazing characteristics will help us to understand this concept in a very simple fashion. So initially the pressure is high, then across the valve the pressure is going to drop and eventually some of it will get recovered. On the opposite side, what is going to happen to velocity? As the law of conservation of energy says, when the pressure is high, the velocity would be less. As the pressure drops, the velocity is going to increase increase and eventually as the pressure is recovering the velocity is going to reduce now when the pressure was dropping if the pressure drops below the vapor pressure curve that is if the liquid turns into vapor phase there is something exciting which happens here the liquids we know when it turns into gases will require more space. Why? Because the molecules of gases are far away from each other as compared to a liquid. And so it kind of happens like a traffic jam where because gas is requiring more space from the construction, it is not allowing more flow to pass. Now, if we'll increase the downstream pressure, even more will reduce it. Again, more liquid will turn into gas and again, it will require more space. So it will not allow the flow to increase. Now you might have the next question that okay fine what about gases gases is already in vapor phase right so choke flow might not be happening the answer is no choke flow even happens in gases yes it has to happen how let's see the case so we'll have our same curve that we'll plot with respect to the pressure and velocity which we saw but here in gases if the velocity keeps increasing to the point where the velocity of the gas is equal to the speed of sound that is match one you're going to have very destructive waves called as shock waves and this will no longer allow the flow to keep on increasing so we always try to keep it in a way such that the velocity Velocity doesn't increase to a way that it is very harmful to the valve as well.
Now, if we have to understand this concept, we can say that if we have a valve and we keep the upstream pressure is 24 bar, so we keep a constant upstream pressure and the valve opening is kept constant. For example, let's say 50 percentage and we keep increasing or decreasing the downstream pressure like example 20 bar, 19 bar, 18 bar and we try to plot a graph, we'll be getting a linear characteristics. Eventually, it could happen that you reach to a point where the pressure difference is not allowing the flow to increase and this point is called as the del p choked and this is against the ideal characteristics where the flow should increase and this phenomenon is called as choke flow. I hope you have liked this video. There's one more thing that I would like to share with you that if you're confused as to why does this cavitation flashing and choke flow be so harmful and how especially as an engineer can you avoid it then this video here I think would genuinely you will find it very helpful. Until next Saturday keep learning take care and thank you so much for watching.